Hi and welcome to the video, I'm Damon, this is Dame Over, and today we're taking a close look at the M1917MG, which is the new weapon for the support class. We'll have a look at the stats and I'll give you my full review with a guide on how to get the most out of this gun and add in some tips and tricks too that I've found have helped me do well with this weapon. So if you find this video useful or entertaining, make sure you hit that like button before you go. So let's get to it. I'm going to start talking about the low weight variant first as it's more than likely the first variant you'll unlock and from what I can tell will probably end up being the most popular. It sits solidly in the middle for statistics with the rest of the support class with most of the stats being the same as the Bene MSC. It has the same rate of fire, the same muzzle velocity but more importantly has the same maximum and minimum damage and if you've used the Bene MSC before you'll know that the minimum damage is the highest in the support class. The Bene Mercy overall is a pretty average weapon, at least for most users, so what is making the M1917 so much better in comparison? Well, it all starts with the spread statistics, and while they are pretty average overall, they improve a lot if you shoot without moving. The spread becomes very minimal when stationary, especially at the gun's optimum range, which translates into more rounds going where you're pointing the gun, which equals more kills, and as a result, a larger penis. To complement this you've got recoil that is almost entirely vertical, which for me took some getting used to but with a little practice all you need to focus on is pulling down as you fire to keep the gun pointing at your target. This all adds up to a very easy to use weapon as you won't be compensating for your crosshair jumping around very much, and as if this wasn't enough you've then been gifted a huge 250 rounds per reload which will allow you to take on multiple enemies at the same time without fear of running out of rounds. You can lay down a lot of suppressive fire from range to help your teammates or simply keep firing at a target from distance until they finally decide they've had enough and fall over for the long sleep. And this is all without mentioning the close range possibilities you have when you've got so many bullets at your disposal. It takes a staggering 65 rounds to be fired consecutively for the M1917 MG to overheat, so even if you do happen across a large group of bad guys in a small room, you can utilise the surprisingly forgiving hip fire and keep holding down the trigger until they drop. The piece de resistance with this weapon though, that's right, I just spoke a bit of French there, is the addition of the bipod. Take everything I just told you about recoil and spread and whatnot and forget it when you're using the bipod. When propped up on cover or lying prone, the bipod makes this gun ridiculously accurate. As long as your target is in your crosshair, you will not miss. It's a great idea to practice using the bipod wherever possible. Make it part of your playstyle to go from window to window and cover to cover, because when you're using the bipod, the M1917MG becomes almost impossible to fight against. Overall, the low weight variant is a very strong, reliable weapon that will allow you to play in a few different ways very effectively. It's excellent at defending an area from a power position, or if you do decide to push in closer and flank, you'll be able to take on a number of enemies with relative ease as long as your positioning is good. Now onto the telescopic variant, and typically I really dislike the guns with a large zoom that aren't a sniper rifle, but what I did, and what I usually do, is take the magnification down to its lowest setting straight away. This not only makes it easier to pick enemies out when you're aiming down sight because of the wider field of view, but it makes it a lot easier when fighting at closer ranges too, while still maintaining enough zoom to challenge at a distance. Now, because of the crazy amount of bullets you can fire without stopping, you can pick people off from really long range with this weapon, but the bipod becomes even more important in these cases. Saying that, even if you are on the move and aiming down sight, you can still pick up kills if you apply the same principles you were using with the low weight variant and pull down to compensate for the recoil. One thing I did notice about the telescopic variant in particular is that you can see the tracer bullets very clearly, so try using that to help guide your shots when you're tracking a target if you're struggling a bit. Although just keeping your crosshair pointing at centre mass will work just as well. Using hip fire in close quarters is very important with this variant, so make sure you put in the time to get used to it or you'll more often than not lose out on the fight. Overall, this weapon is one of the easier ones to use once you get to grips with the firing pattern, and I see it more and more frequently in lobbies that I play in, which seems to suggest it will end up very high in the meta. I personally really love this gun, it's very gratifying to use and it's a lot of fun. It's an all-round enjoyable experience to play with, but that's just my experience, what do you guys make of it? Would you choose the telescopic or the low weight variant? Let me know down in the comments below. So if you had a good time, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button too. Feel free to share this video with whoever and wherever you like. And until next time, that's Dame Over. Peace.